We are less than a month away from the 2024 NFL Draft, and ESPN has posted a new seven-round mock draft. Let's go through all of the Bengals picks here on today's video. Before we get into what was a surprising, I think, first-round selection for Cincinnati, let's update you guys on our March-like battle against the Ravens. First off, thank you so much. We have closed the gap significantly from the last time we did this. I didn't think we are going to be able to pull it off, frankly. We are now right there. We had almost 1,000 likes last time. If we get that number again today, we'll catch the Ravens and make Tyler suck it. Like that video if you haven't already done so for me. Let's get into the Bengals mock draft here. A surprise in round one at pick number 18. It's not an offensive tackle. It's not a defensive tackle. It's a corner in Terion Arnold out of Alabama. Here's what ESPN's Matt Miller argued in favor of the pick. After signing right tackle Trent Brown in free agency, the Bengals are cleared to address the defense in round one. Teaming Arnold up with DJ Turner, Cam Taylor Britt, and Mike Hilton gives the secondary a chance to compete with any team in the AFC. Arnold was a five-star safety prospect, but made the move to corner, where he started for two years, had six INTs, 21 pass breakups. He ran a 4-5 second 40-yard dash at 6 foot 189, and he's feisty and physical at the line of scrimmage. In short, he has the skill set of a true CB1 and a future Pro Bowler. I don't disagree with anything Miller put there. I would be, it would also be both on board and a bit on brand, and a bit of a surprise if the Bengals again go with the guy that maybe doesn't start for them uh, in year one, in round one. Uh, and I would also wonder what your future plans for D. Turner is. Maybe he becomes your nickel down the road. Arnold will probably be a top 20 player on my own board, and I would bet on the Bengals board. But there are some very noteworthy players the Bengals passed on to take Arnold. I think there's a good chance they go corner. Would they, pa would they pass on J.C. Latham? The other, other offensive tackles in Amarius Mims, Guyton. Johnny Newton was there, which maybe isn't as big of a need since they got Sheldon Rankins in there as well. Jackson Powers Johnson. I still think offensive tackle, with the way this class shapes up, is a more likely path for Cincinnati. But Arnold is a very good prospect, and it wouldn't be a bad pick. It's a question of, is it the right pick for Cincinnati? Would you go corner in round one? You know, Maybe you love Quinion Mitchell instead. He was off the board, by the way, in this scenario. Why for yes and for no? It's the pinned comment on this video. If that ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Round two, we go with a wide receiver here for Cincinnati out of Florida, Ricky Parasol. So this is what Matt Miller argues in favor of this selection here. To run the Bengals' three-receiver offense, you need three starting receivers. That's not the case right now with T. Higgins hanging out there on the franchise tag and Tyler Boyd is still a free agent. Bearsaw would give Cincinnati at least one more option opposite Jamar Chase. He's fast, has some of the best end zone footwork and ball tracking in this year's class. A sizable jump in production this past year for the Arizona State to Florida transfer. You probably saw the highlight reel catch uh, with just the unbelievable grab against Charlotte. He's, he's got some of it. He even did some stuff on design runs, by the way. It's a really good athlete, 6'1", uh, ran a 4'4", 140-yard dash, elite agility testing as well. I have a second-round grade on him as well. I think we're a little bit dismissive of Andre Yoshivas Charlie Jones. But we've mentioned this before on the show. I bet the Bengals take a receiver at some point on day two. The value stands out, and there is some inside-outside ability here for Ricky, which I think does make him a pretty solid fit. But again, just like Terry on Arnold, Devondre Sweat is an option. The nose guard, the, the run stopper, which the Bengals certainly need. Zach Frazier is on the board. Uh, Troy Franklin, if you want another speedy receiver. JT Sanders, if you want a tight end. And Ohio State's Michael Hall, more of the pass rushing defensive tackle. So you're filling a need with corner and receiver. Are you filling the best two and making the best pick for Cincinnati? We'll grade this at the end of today's video. But first, today's show is made possible by Game Time. Game Time is the place for last minute tickets to sporting event, for concert, for comedy, theater, whatever. Opening day is just around the corner, and you can find a flash deal for opening day tickets for the Reds if hopefully the team ends up staying a little bit healthier. 
You can go to concerts. You can go to basketball games. You can go to uh, you know, FC Cincinnati games through game time. They've got you covered for whatever your next event is, and they're giving you $20 off your first purchase. Use promo code CHATSPORTS, C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S, for $20 off. That link will be in the comments section and the description of today's show. Game time. You're taking the guesswork out of buying tickets. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price as well. You find tickets in the same section and row for less. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Again, link will be in the comments and the description of today's show. It's Chat Sports over at GameTime.co. Let's move to the third round, and it's a running back off the board here. It's Jalen Wright out of Tennessee. I am conflicted by this one. A, I do love the player. This is I, I, He is actually my number two back in this year's class. Uh, it's also, are you? it's a need. Is it the biggest need for Cincinnati? Here's what Matt Miller argued. Joe Mixon's off to Houston, replaced with Zach Moss and Chase Brown in Cincinnati. But Wright has electric speed and the outside running ability to push them both down the depth chart and be a rookie starter. <sighs> the production was awesome. On a, but he's also, can he be a, a, a full-time back? Like, he was never a full-time back in, uh, in, in college. He was always a, a rotation piece. But he does offer, the Bengals may be about wanting more ex explosive plays, right? That's like all Jalen Wright brings. Uh, he is a consistent explosive athlete. He's 210 and ran a 43840. That's very impressive. But is running back, receiver, and corner how you want to address the first three rounds? The players are all good. Is it right for Cincinnati? Some other guys on the board, Rook Aroro, if you want another defense tackle. Christian Jones is there on the offensive line. Trey Benson, who's actually my number one back, was on the board. Brandon Dorless out of Oregon. Another guard option who can maybe play some tackle for you. Dominique Puny was there. By the way, all five of those guys went off the board before the Bengals' third-round comp pick as they addressed the right tackle. And I do love this pick a lot for Cincinnati. It's Blake F Fisher at a Notre Dame at number 97 overall. He could certainly be off the board earlier than this, but the Bengals are finding a you know developmental piece behind Trenton Brown, finally addressing trench play with their fourth pick. Here's what Matt Miller argued. Even after getting Trent Brown, the Bengals have to think long-term about the offensive line. Fisher's footwork can get a little heavy, but his punch and power help him project as a potential starting right tackle. I think Matt's got him pegged pretty well there. There are things to like about Fisher, who was, to an extent, overshadowed uh, because his left tackle, Joe Alt, is going to be a top-10 pick and is a superstar caliber player. Uh, but this, this is, I, I love this pick. It's my favorite one so far. Because it's good value, and you're filling a pretty big need in the process. Some other notable guys who are on the board, you probably could have waited on, on running back because Braylon Allen and Blake Corn were both still there for you. Karan Amagaji, uh, the Yale offensive tackle. Again, that's Amagaji. It's a, it's a tricky one. Uh, he's there, another tackle option. Theo Johnson's a freak athlete at tight end. That's an area of concern long term. Makai Wingo offers you another defensive tackle piece as well. Now, if you haven't already, please subscribe to us here at Bengals Breakdown. We will have NFL draft coverage for you. We will keep in loop with the UDFAs. We'll have some agency coverage, of course, still as well. Don't miss out. Hit that sub button right now. Let's go to the fourth round pick. And look, I would have gone OTDT earlier, but they found great value in this mock draft. McKinley Jackson out of Texas A&M, who... I think could very well be a third round pick potentially. You want a nose guard to replace DJ Reader, right? Here you go. Uh, Mc Jackson didn't take the step forward I was truly hoping for this past year, but you're looking for a run stopping, clogging the lane nose guard. You need that. You don't have that on your roster right now. There you go. There is your your guy uh, in Jackson out of A and M. The fifth round, this is a different style receiver. Uh, even then compared to Charlie Jones, Jacob Cowling out of Arizona is, you're really hoping for Tank Dell 2.0 here because this is an extreme size outlier in a negative sense. He's under 5'8 and a half, 168 pounds. 4'3", 840, he can fly. He offers some decent yak ability, but he's going to be a slot-only player. 
And if you, you're, you're going to have T. Higgins back. You're going to lose Tyler Boyd. So you're going to draft two receivers in back-to-back years. The math game is, is getting a little bit tricky from that perspective. Um, you know, he was more of a downfield threat for UTEP. The numbers reflect that and was much more of a kind of short area slot receiver uh, previously. He also, he wasn't great on punt returns for Arizona and no other special teams value, which, which is a red flag, but I got him fourth, fifth round. So you're right in the spot that he should go. Do you have a day three draft target in mind? If you do, drop that name for me in the comments section. Dalen Hoker, I, I think, could very well end up being a Bengal. Uh, by the way, I know there's some interest uh, from that perspective. He's a bit of an older prospect. This is the classic, uh, you know, you can even show in the stats here. Began at BYU in 2018, then did the Mormon mission trip where he was out and then came back and didn't do much, and then had a massive breakout year for Colorado State. Uh, sixth round grade for me, so we're, we're right in the sweet spot for him. This is a pass-catching tight end two option with good, not great athletic ability. Let's get a guard here. Layden Robinson out of Texas A&M. We're outside the top 200, and for me, around this range, I don't love the depth uh, in this year's class. And you know, But taking a day three lineman, I will never be mad about it. Got to keep doing it if you're the Bengals. The PFF numbers are you know, okay. Penalty machine, eight penalties, and... Under 700 snaps, that's that's too many uh, from that perspective. I think could use some work in the run blocking, but draft and try to develop a guard, no complaints about it. I do like this seventh round pick. It's Xavier Thomas out of Clemson. Now, this is a former highly touted recruit who will occasionally show flashes. There are moments of like, ooh, wow, that, 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 that was a pretty good rep right there. And it's always like, wh why can't you do more of that? You know, he, this was the number four recruit at one point, uh, you know, coming out of IMG Academy and, and uh, or sorry, the, the number three recruit, you know, number one ranked defensive end, and it never put it all together. But that's a guy you can gamble on in the seventh round. I just, he's the seventh rounder because at this point, if he hasn't shown it now, is he ever going to? Deshaun Anthony, the pick here, the seventh rounder, Liberty to uh, Ole Miss transfer, Safety depth is fine. Look, you, you've got a bunch of picks this year for Cincinnati. Why not see if you can get lucky with one of those uh, seventh rounders and at least give you some, some special teams ability? You know, his numbers were okay. There were some ball hawking traits we saw. He's, a very, I think, a very slender frame. You can even see it in the photo there. It's a bit of a slight red flag for me there. But seventh round pick, hope he becomes a special teams contributor, uh, you know, even to maybe to a lesser extent than even what Tyson Anderson's been for the Bengals. So the ESPN mock draft. Interesting. That's how I describe it. Terry on Arnold round one. Ricky Parasol round two. Jalen Wright round three. Then they get some trench players. Blake Fisher, McKinley Jackson, Jacob Cowing to be some slot receiver in the fifth round at Arizona. Dalen Hoker from Colorado State. Layden Robinson, Xavier Thomas, and Dejon Anthony round out the, day, the late day three picks for Cincinnati. So grade the ESPN seven-round mock draft for me. A, B, C, D, or F? You can be honest in the comments section.